Tyler, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm really excited to be here. I am so excited. I cannot tell you how long I've been waiting to have you on the show. All of my friends who are listening, who have heard me talk about our equine experience, our horse therapy experience at Miraval, they're like, they're so excited for this episode because um, it was just a life changing experience for all of us. And I'm definitely, we're going to get into that. But first, I want to jump into a little bit of your story and how you got to where you are. Because I know that you weren't always, like you had been taught earlier on a different way to be with horses and to work with horses. But there was a certain moment in your journey that really opened your eyes and changed everything for you and led you down this different path that you never expected, which then led you to where you are now. So take us to that moment. Tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today. I grew up going to old Tucson here in in Arizona. And my mom actually reminded me that when I was about five or six years old, I told her, I want to be a cowboy someday. Because my idea of of what cowboys did, they jumped off building fist by (laughs) gunfights. I thought I was actually going to follow that path. Yeah. I was going to go to stunt school. I wanted to move to Hollywood, get into the movies. That was the Mm -hmm. idea at the time. Um, And then I had a bad fall and that led me to find out I had scoliosis. So Mm. there was that pivotal moment again. It was like, I've got to rethink what I'm doing, but I know I still want to have fun. I want to be happy and enjoy where I spend my time back online. (laughs) And I found a a summer job in Mexico. Uh That summer job is where I met horses. I was going for the, the natural part, the hiking, the kayaking, the fishing, and they did horseback riding. So when you were working as a stunt performer, you didn't, you didn't work with horses at that point. It was Uh on the ground. Gotcha. So that's what what allowed you to get into it. You weren't like, I'm going after horses first round. You were like, oh, I think I can jump off buildings. That seems fun. (laughs) Exactly. It was an adrenaline factor. Right. A friend of mine at the stunt show, him and I were looking at apartments to move in together and move to California. So we were really pushing this. Uh, And then after falling on my neck, that's, that's what happened. I fell from the building onto my neck and it was in the middle of a show and I had to get up and be like, I survived. And I remember being like, Oh right. my God, I really did survive. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I remember it was just laying in bed, with the ice pack, uh, oh. after I'd seen the chiropractor and he told me, you really need to rethink what you're doing. You're damaging your body. And mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you not to do it, but if you want to have any kind of valuable life left, take a second guess. Yikes. So, I remember being really upset and I remember talking to my stunt director at the time and, and telling him, look, I, I can't keep doing this. You know, I got to do some like light duty stuff where I wasn't actually in the show anymore. I was kind of more behind the scenes. And that's when I, I started looking again, okay, what am I going to do? Like, this isn't the end. This is just another step. And that's, that's when I found that job in Mexico. So my, <laughs> my words to the uh, stunt director at the time were, you know what, I'm going to drop the false cowboy thing. I'm going to go, Try the real yeah. cow. <laughs> the real cow. <laughs> so let's fast forward to now. For the listener, give us a kind of an overview of what you do now with horses, because I know it's not riding horses, as some of my friends thought when I brought them. <laughs> um, but how do you work with horses and with people? Um, so we have a lot of different activities that we do with people, um, from cleaning their feet to walking them around the corrals to eat what's called round petting, where you're moving the horse without touching them. That's how we exercise them. And so uh, the emphasis is not on the activity. It's, it's not on the horse. It's on how you show up to it, how you advocate for your own wants and needs. You know, how do we not attach ourselves to the expectations of who we are, or what we should be able to do um, very much like you said that open place of possibility so with working with the horses a lot of different things come up and a lot of the times it's, it's emotional stuff from the past so we're having people pay attention to what they think how they feel how these two things are coming together to create their behavior and their reality right as we kind of talked about earlier a lot of the fear around horses that unpredictability the out of control that's not their first time experiencing that Somewhere in their life, they've experienced that and learned to fear that. And that's what's coming in and distorting the interaction with the horses. 
it's it's changing how we communicate. It's changing how we you know, relate. It's changing everything. You know, from the moments where we think the horse is stubborn or it doesn't like us because it's not working with us. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. But if that's <laughs> what we're perceiving, that's mm-hmm. again, it's, it's changing everything. So when yeah. we start to question those patterns and you know, where have we learned these things? Everything seems different. Even though the horse didn't change, nothing really changed externally. Everything changed internally. So it's a big yeah. shift in focus from the external to the internal. You know, what's mm. going on for them? No. What's going on for me? And that's, that's something I think we've been tuned out of. So I just want to set the stage for the listener of um, what my experience was with this equine experience that we had with you, because I it's not an overstatement to say that it changed my life. It's still, I can drop right back into that moment. And I remember what transpired and not only for me, but for my friends as well. And so, um, for the listener, this was for my 40th birthday, not that long ago. And I decided I wanted to invite my five closest friends, uh, from college to Miraval in Tucson. And little did we know that we were going to have this life-changing experience with Tyler. And part of why I was drawn to Miraval was because of this equine experience um, that I had heard about. And so I wanted to bring um, all my friends to experience it with me because I had never done it before. But I didn't tell them very much about it. Um, So... They didn't know they were like, do we need to wear long pants? Are we going to be riding the horses? And so I kept it very open-ended. And so I thought it was really, it was amusing to me at least. So we're walking up um, to the, uh, would you call it an arena or a corral? The Yeah, that's our round pen. Okay, the round pen. And I remember we were walking up and there were some benches along the side where my friends and I were going to sit while you gave the orientation and introduced us to the horse. And we're walking in and um, grabbing our seats and my friends notice there's boxes of tissues. And they're like, huh, what are these tissues for? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's about to get real. Um and, you know, I, I don't think they really realized what we were going to experience, but what transpired over the following couple of hours, um, I think it, it opened up a completely new chapter in our friendship together. These are friends that I had known for over 20 years. And some of the things that came out through this experience um, were things that we hadn't had a chance to say to each other or to really confront within ourselves in probably five, 10 years or more um, that we were able to really sync up on and have the place and the courage to share with each other. Um and so I'm, I'm going to just share my experience first, and I want you to weigh in because I've told okay. this story now many times, but I didn't have your perspective. And so I right. want you to add in your what you remember. I know you do these all the time. <laughs> yes. I'm sure there's, um, there's patterns, there's common patterns that you can uh, t- bring in. So because it was my birthday, I volunteered to go first. So I stepped into the pen, um, uh, with you and the horse uh, whose name I think was tater tot. Is that right? That's right. Tater tot the horse. Oh, we'll always have a special place in our heart for him. Um, anyway, so we, I stepped into the pen. I remember thinking as I stepped in, I was like, okay, well, I've seen this before in a movie. And I'm just going to do, I'm interested in the one where I try to pick up the horse's hoof. And I'm just going to pick that one and I'll walk up to the horse and I'm going to do it. And he already showed us the steps. So I'm going to probably be able to do it. And I'm pretty good at most things. So I'm going to do it. And it's probably going to work for me first time. And my friends might have trouble, but I'm going to probably be able to do it. And so I step into the ring and what blew me away was first, before we even approached the horse, you just you have this natural way about you where you just, I think you just naturally without even thinking about it kind of disarm people. And so you're just like, how's it going? How are you feeling? And maybe because of that, um, that place we were in and how open we all were, it's like, you know what? I'm kind of feeling nervous. And normally I wouldn't say that. I would say, 
I'm feeling great. I'm so excited to do this thing. But for whatever reason, I felt I could be a little bit more vulnerable. And so I said, you know, I'm kind of feeling nervous. And you said, great. Well, where do you feel that in your body? And it took me some time to realize where I was feeling it in my body. And even this, I feel like you had an intuitive hit about because at first, um, I said it was kind of in my solar plexus region That's right. and you didn't stop there. You said, well, where else do you feel it? And I said, kind of in my, my throat area. And I don't know how you knew it, but that's the, my throat chakra is the area that I have always had trouble with my entire life. So you kind of left the solar plexus and you were like, let's focus on the throat. And I, throughout the whole experience, you just, you seem to have these intuitive knowings and within, I don't even know what questions you asked, but within five minutes or so, I remember I was totally breaking down crying and all my friends were crying and I was like I just feel like I always have to have it together and it's so exhausting and it was just I mean within just a few minutes I was able to and this was even before getting to the horse I didn't even touch the horse yet at this point and I know you've said this and your mentor's book from Wyatt Webb, um, it's not about the horse. It's not about the horse is what we've learned. One more question I have for you before we move into the life and money round, money show spotlight round. Um, yeah. If somebody's listening to this and they're like, you know, I, I don't know if I can get out to Tucson to work with the horses. Is there another way that they could work with you if they were interested? Yeah, so I do virtual stuff, uh, obviously without horses. Um, but that's my own life coaching program I started uh, outside of Miraval. So mm. it's enlighten.com, E N L I H T E N. It's a mm-hmm. old English spelling variation. Ah. So I, I take on new clients there. Um, I focus mostly with men, but I, I do keep my, my scope open. All right, Tyler. Well, this has been a beautiful conversation and I'm sure that many of our listeners may want to follow up with you, learn more either about coaching with you or through about the experience at Miraval. So tell them if they wanted to follow up or if they wanted to learn more, where can they go? Yeah. So I have an email, tyler at enlighten.com. So T-Y-L-E-R at E-N-L-I-H-T-E-N.com. Fantastic. All right. Well, Tyler, um, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. Tyler Thompson, certified life coach at Enlighten and equine facilitator and supervisor at Miraval, Arizona. Tyler, thank you so much Absolutely. for sharing your wisdom and just your knowing and your way of being with us here today. Of course. Thanks for having me on. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> 